Ina, ohayo gozaimasu, or actually, konnichiwa, Jesus freaking gamer here. It just went from morning to afternoon, and yes, this is the uh, la, 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 Tuesday message. I think of my day there. I stayed up all night again because yay scheduling. And today we have yet another controversial topic ahead of us. And let's jump right into it. I've covered before how Solomon made two mistakes and yet he was beloved by God, he basically followed God, but he didn't do everything the way he should have. Um, and the two things that he did was one, he married Pharaoh's daughter as a, in a, as, blah, as a political agreement when she was not a believer, and that was wrong. Number two, he didn't tear down the high places. He himself worshipped God at the highest of the high places. And that was also wrong. Despite that, the Lord asked him what he wanted. He asked for wisdom. The Lord said, I'll also give you wealth and health. And you shall build my temple. And he was greatly blessed in this chapter. The Lord speaks to him a second time, yet again appearing to him and saying, I've heard your prayer. I've heard your supplication. My presence will settle on this house. And I'll be there forever. Just make sure you follow me. And just make sure that your sons and your... And all of your descendants follow after me. And as long as they do, you will always have a man sitting on the throne of Israel. So kind of a warning, so to speak, which the Lord gives to basically all of his servants. Nothing unusual there. Now the third problem comes in. We're going to start with verse 20. All the people, this is 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 20. All the people who are left of the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, who were not of the children of Israel, that is, their descendants who were left in the land after them, whom the children of Israel had not been able to destroy completely, from these Solomon raised forced labor, as it is to this day. But of the children of Israel Solomon made no forced laborers, because they were men of war and his servants, his officers, his captains, commanders of his chariots, and his cavalry. And herein lies fault number three. Solomon did not kill all of those people. Now that is a really radical thing for a modern day, contemporary, American, Western train of thought to go. Usually Christians eschew the verses in the Old Testament where God kills a bunch of people. They do not look at Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 17. I'm slowly getting to... Actually, let's back up to verse 16, where it says, But of the cities of these peoples, which the Lord your God gives you as an inheritance, this is Moses speaking, you shall let nothing that breathes remain alive, but you shall utterly destroy them, the Hittite, and the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, just as the Lord your God has commanded you, lest they teach you to do according to all their abominations, which they have done for their gods, and you sin against the Lord your God. A reminder of Judges, chapter 1 and 2, which I've covered on this channel where the Israelites are going into the promised land, they kill off certain peoples, they leave alive certain peoples, they enslave certain peoples, and they're not able to drive out certain other peoples because those peoples are still strong. And the Lord rebuked them and said, Why didn't you destroy the people that I told you to destroy? Because of this, I will no longer destroy these people from before you, but they will be a snare before you, and now I will use them to test you to see if you will obey the Lord your God or not. To go over to 1 Samuel chapter 15, where God commands Saul, through Samuel, to destroy all of the Amalekites, man, woman, and child. And when he leaves the king alive, the Lord is angry. He says, the kingdom is taken away from you forever and will be given to someone who is better than you. That would be David, who was Solomon's father. And then Samuel rectifies that situation by hacking a gag to pieces. And here Solomon, once again, does not obey the commandment of the Lord, and he leaves these people alive. And so that is his third mistake. And we will see him commit many other mistakes Maybe not many, many others, but a few others. Well, the biggest mistake being a heart that eventually turns away from God and to idols. Hence, the pro it was more of a problem with his wives and the peoples, but they were the daughters of these other peoples. Not necessarily Canaanites, but of other lands that drew his heart away from the Lord. And I find that a fault in him. He should have killed those people. He had absolute dominion over all of Israel. This was Israel's golden age when he had... All the power necessary 
and he still let them live. This is obviously controversial because of the fact that God's telling people to kill men, women, and children. That isn't a popular thought nowadays, and I have explained in the past, and I will take a minute to do so yet again, why this is okay. God is the judge of all living beings, and all humans from birth are sinners. We've all sinned in our mother and father, Adam and Eve. So from the moment of conception, we are knit in our mother's room, yes, by God, but as our mother and father who bring us into this world. Therefore, sin is mixed in with that perfect creation of God. Like I said a few days ago, God's perfect, but we mess things up. God's not at fault, we are. And when we bring our children into this world, they come into this world as sinners. That is orthodox theology. No Christian would question that. And because every single being is brought into this world in sin, it is at God's discretion to kill or to let live by his grace. And when David and Bathsheba committed their sin, God punished that sin not by killing the perpetrators of the sin, but by taking the life of the newborn child. And God has the right to do so as the judge and as we are all sinners. And sin's final penalty is death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 So, if there are comments in this video requesting a full sermon on Sunday, I'll do that. I know these videos aren't incredibly watched. Maybe this title might sound a little bit clickbaity, but it's exactly what it says on the tin. Um... Should Solomon have killed those people? Or something to that effect. I haven't titled the video just yet, but it'll be something to that effect. And it's not really clickbaity because that's exactly what this message is about. So if there are enough comments or enough dislikes or something to that effect, I will make a full sermon on this. It'll be basically an elongation and elaboration of this particular message, but I fault Solomon for that, and he messed up. He didn't obey the commandment of the Lord who is right, who is good, who is just. Let me know what you think in the comments. And eh, maybe this video will just be like most of the other biblical messages at this time. It won't be seen too, too much. Or maybe this one will pick up ground. Who knows? We'll see. Hopefully one day all of these biblical messages will be seen to enlighten, to encourage, and also to, to make question and to, um, and to probe thought. Maybe even to knock some holes in some what would normally be Orthodox Christian beliefs, but those Christians haven't exactly studied the entire Bible. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you. Despite the questions I raise up, I do it in love because I want you to think and I want you to grow. And God bless.